Yo, what's going on, suppers? It is Dives, Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. Welcome to Suit Up. The Suit Up podcast can be found on iTunes and Spotify. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. On tap for today, we're going to talk 90s comedies, the best 90s comedies of all time. We're going to give you our top 15 list, as well as some awesome honorable mentions. Loretta, are you ready to suit up? Let's suit up. Let's suit up. I am Iron Man. I find your lack of faith disturbing. I want you to remember the one man who beat you. The Force will be with you. Always. A king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. Everyone is all day. What's but a smile on that face? That's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry. Just want to watch the world burn. All right, guys, we are back. We are talking 90s comedies today, our top 15, along with some awesome honorable mentions. Joining us today is, of course, our co host. You know him as Loretto from Movies Matrix. Uh, follow him on Twitter at Marcellus Durden and Movies Matrix on Twitter at Movies Matrix and MoviesMatrix.com. What's going on, dude? How you doing, man? And just uh, trying to enjoy this hump day. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm doing good, man. Uh, it's fun to go back with these things. Uh, we just did a Pixar and Disney podcast, and I swear to you, man, this was harder to make a top 15 list than my top five Pixar list. Is that crazy? What's going on, man? Um, I don't think it's crazy. I mean, literally, when you dig into a, fil a filmography of a decade, I mean, and, and just how epic the 90s were as we go through our, our movies here, there's so many movies to choose from. And for that reason alone, I mean, I kind of had to make a little separations there. So, um, you know, some genres are so fluid. Um, I would say like action comedies, kids comedies, sports comedies, almost could have their own lists themselves. Yeah. Um, so those were omitted from my list. Um, but, you know, shout out to like Bad Boys with Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Shout out to Rush Hour with Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. Those are some of the funniest movies I've ever seen, but I wouldn't consider them straight comedies. So had to leave them off my list, man. But um, same, same for like Home Alone, same for Sandlot. You know, we're not including these those kid uh, comedies. So these are true comedies of the 90s. What were our top 15, man? We're going to start off with honorable mentions. Go ahead, man. Give us some of your honorable mentions. All right, man, going back into the time machine here a little bit. Um, and just because we kind of shied away from family comedy, but I couldn't talk about 90s comedy without just mentioning uh, just the great Daniel Stern. Um, <laughs> he played Marv in Home Alone, like uh, the film you just referenced. And the first time I ever had a laugh attack, I was about five or six or so, saw Daniel Stern in Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, 1992, I believe. And him getting electrocuted with the... <laughs> I, I, was, I, was, I was a kid, and I naturally could not stop laughing. I just had to bring that up. And also the brick scene. I mean, the... <laughs> I mean, that's the brick scene. Oh, man. <laughs> Love it. Love it. And then also shouts out. Um, they've, got a little, they've got a couple on my list, but, I mean, the 90s were so amazing because of the talent in it. And shouts out to the starts of Jim Carrey and Adam Sandler with... Um, respectively, the Ace Ventura series, Billy Madison, which were had funny, 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 funny moments, especially like uh, you know Jim Carrey getting stabbed in the leg with the spears and like, ah, ah, ah. again, it was amazing. But I just those kind of films, like they were so wacky that as my greatest films list for this list, I just couldn't really include them in. But I just it was worth talking about. Um, shouts out to Mel Brooks's last feature. Admittedly, not one of his best. It was Dracula, Dead and Loving It, 1995, with uh, the great Leslie Nielsen, RIP. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, the scene where Van Helsing in the film is stabbing the newly vampired woman. Um, they were kind of like trying to inspect her body. And the blood. And the blood. <laughs> and they're just getting drowned in blood. And, like, <laughs> his name, but he was like, there's so much blood. <laughs> And then Mel Brooks as Van Helsing was like, she just ate. <laughs> Brilliant. I, I had a laugh attack at that scene. And my last honorable mention, which I got a duck. I mean, I'm probably going to get tomatoes thrown at me. 
Um, this was my last honorable mention. It was there's something about Mary. Mm -hmm. um, don't get me wrong. I loved it when I was young. Um, you know, the Farley brothers, some people hate them, some people love them, but you know, their round of humor at the time was gold. Ben Stiller is amazing. Um, I got to mention, of course, who doesn't remember him getting his willy whacker stuck in a zipper and um, his epic fight, fight with the dog. But the one reason why I left it as I got older, I've never found myself re-watching that film. Mm -hmm. um, the rewatchability factor for that film is just low for me. I mean, yeah, it's funny, and it's like some of this... Um, overall, there's a lot, of, a lot of things about that movie just kind of creeps me out, like Woogie and his little... His little uh, I forgot why he had all those, like, weasel... Those meat... The, the warts. Yeah. Um, the whole stalker aspect of all those characters. It's a really creepy movie when you really break it down. And ultimately, I've never gone back like, oh, I need to watch this movie again. It's just, you know, it just kind of fell away from my personal favorite list. So, yeah, uh, I will give you my honorable mentions and then we'll kind of talk about like what is what were like the important variables and factors that went into making of your list. Uh, my quick two honorable mentions. Um, I got to give love to some of the uh, best odd couples in film history. And that is Grumpy Old Men, including uh, Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. Uh, just a huge nod there to the blooper reel, um, which is one of my favorites of all time. Uh, they were kind of like the pioneers of the blooper reel, and it's just still a classic. These two had some of the best chemistry ever. I mean, when, when you look at movies today, like they, it's that good. And then my other favorite uh, honorable mention here is White Men Can't Jump. It's not only like one of my favorite uh, basketball movies of all time, but the chemistry between Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson dynamic just just so so good so let's talk about uh what went into your list i for me personally i wanted a balance i didn't want to put nothing but jim carrey movies or mike meyer movies or you know um adam sandler movies i wanted kind of a somewhat of a balance in my list uh, i went with uh best quotables like movies that i went could look back in my childhood and movies that really dominated me socializing with friends at parties, me being in school and high school and middle school and, you know, what dominated that conversation. Those were some important variables. What about what about you, man? Oh, 100 um, percent. You hit the nail on the head with the quotes. And personally, I went with um, for me, it was rewatchability. Yeah. And um, I agree with having a balance and I, I think i also i think i've got all the greats on there but at the same time you're right i kind of was selective about okay which i'd pick out of the five ten movies they did in the 90s because carrie and sandler alone had a million yeah um they're so good sandler had two hits in one year he was like like almost doing like the mcu style like oh you like this movie i got this movie come out in four more <laughs> and so uh he was hot and um yeah i had to pick like i think for me when uh, i'll go into it later um, with both Carrie and Sandler, I kind of picked the movies for me that meant the most to me personally. And also I felt like those two films um, were their best performances. I would say like, for example, the first Ace Ventura and Billy Madison, they were kind of figuring the movie thing out. They were a little bit over the top, a little bit kind of like just too wacky. But at some point they got older and every movie they got a little bit better. And I feel like the ones I chose on my list really define them as actors and as uh, comedians. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you mentioned it earlier. A lot of these movies are literally like the first movies of some actors that, you know, really defined at least my life. And it's really, really interesting to kind of go back. And I was watching like clips from all these movies that I really haven't seen in quite some time. And they're <laughs> still funny, man. They still hold up. And it's just uh, these are the movies that really kind of uh, stick. And let's start off with number 15, man. Go ahead. What's your number 15? All right, man. Um, my number 15 literally cracked my list about 30 minutes ago. Um, we got 1997's Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Myers um, franchise, spoofing like swinger 60s slash spy flicks and literally creating an iconic character that spans decades now and i think i'll remember until i'm old um i think it also showcased his talent um like a lot of other comedians will that we'll see on here that um could play more than one character and i think that in itself is a talent alone um for him to play the title character but also play the arch nemesis um 
the great Doctor Evil. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and, <laughs> <laughs> he, and all he wanted was freaking sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their heads. Oh, God, so great. And oh, also, yeah. I think um, the, the cast of Austin Powers is incredible. I mean, uh, number two, you know, and having him play a goofy role. Yep. Um, Robert Wagner, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yes. Totally. Yep. And uh, uh, then it was, uh, wasn't it Will Ferrell in like the sequels? Yes. <laughs> well, he was in the first one too. Yes. Um, and uh, Dr. Evil. Well, actually, that's probably one of my favorite. Like, that was my, that was the part in this movie that made me laugh out loud. And I think that was when I had to break down the list. Did this movie make me laugh out loud? And every single movie on my list did. And I would say when Will Ferrell gets burned, uh, <laughs> Dr. Evil hits the button, like, I'm done with you. And his chair flips and he gets lit ablaze, but he doesn't die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he keeps like, <laughs> that so gag goes on and on. Yeah. And um, you gotta love, like, the, the little in jokes there. Um, you know, the, uh, the uh, a lot of vagina. You know, like, because James Bond had all those, you know, pussy galore. And the fact that she, uh, he played on that was great. And um, yeah, overall, it's um, it's it, to me, it's still the test of time. So yeah, I've got Austin Powers in an international man of mystery as my number thirteen. So I guess I'll just you know lead right in. And, you know, this is not my favorite Mike Myers film of the '90s. We're gonna get to that in a little bit. Um, but what I, what I think Austin Powers did extremely well was it's a spoof of James Bond movies, but it doesn't make fun of James Bond movies. It kind of like celebrates James Bond movies in a certain respect, and I really like that. Um, you go back to like scary movie, like that literally made fun of the, the horror cliches and it didn't really do well. But Austin Powers, Mike Myers, man, this is just one of the best spoofs of all time. And, you you know, you, you we're going to talk a lot about Adam Sandler <laughs> as we move forward, you know, but this is like had that some of that like stupid, immature kind of humor. Um, but you, you, you quickly forget about it because, you know, it's just so well done. And this is. Uh, one of those movies that did that had one of my favorite reactions in a movie theater. I literally remember seeing this for the first time in the theater and just the, the entire theater laughing at the same time. It's really one of the best experiences. It has real staying power for you. Um, and, it, you know, you think about the James Bond movies that came after this, like Tomorrow Never Dies, uh, Die Another Day, The World Is Not Enough. Like, it's something worth mentioning that, Austin Powers of spoof of James Bond movies was so much better than the actual James Bond movies of the time. So uh, just a little something. And shout out to the guard. The... No! <laughs> <laughs> move! Move! Get out of the way! <laughs> so Brilliant. good. Brilliant. So, so good. Oh, there's just so many lines like, who does number two work for? And you have a uh, Tom Arnold in the, in the stall next to him. Yeah, great cameo. Great cameo. There's a lot of great cameos in these movies. Damn, boy, what'd you eat? <laughs> so, so good. All right, I'm going to go into my number 15. It is A Night at the Roxbury. Um, yes. Did I love this movie? No. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right, so I don't think there's a movie on this list of my personal list that defines the 90s better than A Night at the Roxbury. Because, like, SNL was king at the time. Uh, and you had uh, Will Ferrell and Chris Kattan. The, the chemistry there was so, so good. And it was all kind of revolving around just one of my favorite songs ever, which is What is Love by Hathaway. Um, and it, I, when I think of uh, A Night at the Roxbury... I go straight to what I'm watching right now, and I'm watching uh, Shit's Creek. Uh, my wife and I are binging Shit's Creek, and it is phenomenal. We cannot stop laughing watching this show. We're on season five already within the last three days, and it, there's like a lot of parallels in between A Night at the Roxbury and Shit's Creek. You have like these like spoiled siblings of a very rich family dealing okay. with the rigors of like you know having a real job, running a business, and I thought that was really interesting. But Night at the Roxbury, man, the head thing. When they're even doing it to like the elevator, there's an elevator music of what is love. It's, it's so funny. Fantastic. Um, that's a perfect segue for me. <laughs> um, coincidentally, that is my number 14. Ah, there it is. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. And, um, you know, damn, SNL, man. I mean, literally, 
half of my list at least has someone that was in SNL at some point in time. Um, such, you know, again, we go back to like remembering quotes and moments and literally on my little thing there, that, that was one of my favorite moments. The, uh, Emilio! Emilio! <laughs> 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 and also shouts out to that was Joe Mantegna, right? As that one club yeah. owner. Yes. Did you just grab my ass? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that <laughs> bit wrecked when I was younger. Oh man. And then the guy, the guy plays it straight, which is, you know, just one of those brilliant like moments in comedy where the straight guy is just like, sir, um, from where I'm standing, that's physically impossible. <laughs> Call Mockery, man. Call Mockery, <laughs> daily update, right? Or something like that on SNL. I love that guy. <laughs> oh, you're right, you're right. And then you're no, not Colin Mock, not Colin Mock. I, I know you're just fixed. Sorry. But you know, like, it's, it's just common gold, man. And um, you know what's interesting about that film, and one reason why I, I had to include it with me is the fact that it works. I think that in itself is an achievement. I mean, they took this sketch that, you know, when I first heard about the movie when I was younger, I was like, wait, how are they going to make a movie about these two clowns, you know? And then the fact that they made it work, it was just amazing. And shouts out to Dan Hedaya, who uh, was their father. And, you know, he's one of those great character actors who you see in a lot of films. He was the dad in Clueless. Um, shouts out to that movie. That's one of my favorite movies of all time, but not quite like laugh out loud to make my comedy list. But um, just overall. Oh, and then also the cameos. Um, I mean, there's so many there's so many good ones in that one. And just, uh, you know, the chemistry with Chris Kattan and Will Ferrell is just dynamite, man. So um yeah like a lot on my list i think another one i just remembered like these movies are really fun to watch with a lot of people and you know they're they're kind of the way you you find your way to socialize with friends and tell inside jokes and have quotes from these movies and that this is another one of them where you know a lot of you know the quotes in this movie a lot of the dialogue in this movie i talked with friends all the time um one of my favorite moments of this movie uh chris Catan was asking will ferrell uh, if he had any plans for like at 1230, then, you know, a couple days from now. And, and Will Ferrell turns around, they're at their store, and he takes out a calendar, a planner, <laughs> and he unwraps it, and he goes to the day, and he looks at it, he's like, I'm free. Like, it's just like, that's gold, man. It's so funny. And also shouts out to when uh, they had their little fight, and then uh, at the end, uh, to just to gain back his love, Chris Kattan puts up the careless whisper radio. <laughs> I'm never gonna dance again. I broke the again. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, that's. See, I mean, I just I couldn't not have that on my list, man. Such a fun movie. That's a, that's a great one. That's a great one. Uh, should I go to number fourteen? I guess so. Um, that was gonna say, that's the one missing, right? So. Yeah. All right. My number fourteen is Galaxy Quest. You ever seen Galaxy Quest? Oh man! <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. One of my favorite movies ever. But yeah. I just. That was a hard genre thing, right? I just, I, I didn't think of it, you know, it just didn't enter my brain on that. So never give up, never surrender. It's, this is a, this, this film was amazing, man. Like, uh, not only is this film just like an amusing spoof of sci-fi films, but it's actually like a really good action adventure sci-fi film on its own. Um, it's got that balance, like the, the fifth element. I, uh, fifth element is one of my favorite movies, but it's got that perfect balance of like, sci-fi and comedy and it just blends itself really really well uh that's why it just went over my head but brilliant movie i love that movie so i'm glad you mentioned it <laughs> the dialogue is so good the acting is perfect tim allen doing william shatner you know is worth watching this movie in itself but my favorite part about this movie was alan rickman and his dry performance as uh, the the I am not the strange looking alien in in the show <laughs> character and his like right, weird, yeah um what is it uh I Rothbar I will avenge My you Rothbar hammer yes you shall be avenged so Dude, funny I, I love that movie bro <laughs> so like his reluctance to say it like halfway through and then there's a real payoff at the end um, it's just heartwarming it's feel good. Um, the score by David Newman is also top notch. I got to throw that in. Um, just a really, really a love letter to all science fiction fans. And I just love it. A lot of these actually, now that I think about it, are spoofs. So <laughs> I didn't even and, realize that until now. And I think what elevates that film, and it's uh, to touch on that, is that it's such a great cast. I mean, Sigourney Weaver, Alan Rickman, Tim Allen, and a younger Sam Rockwell playing Guy. Um, and then also like a little 
not really cameo, but a small bit role for uh, Justin Long yeah. playing the, the nerdy kid that knows everything about the show and has it all on tape and stuff. And um, oh, it's, such, it's such a fun movie, man. Good pick, good pick. It, it breaks my heart. It's not on my list, but um, it's just one of those. It it crossed so many genres, it and it does. just did it so well. It has. It, I don't think it's as funny as some of them on my list. It doesn't have like the consistent jokes, but it's got some of the biggest laugh out loud moments. Oh. And a Tony Shalhoub, I feel like such a jerk not mentioning him, but he's awesome as well. So Totally. All right, let's go on to 13, man. All right, man. Uh, this one goes out to all the stoners in the world. Uh, 1998's Half-Baked, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, endlessly quotable, I mean. Um, I mean, there's so many. I mean, I need to talk to Samson. Uh <laughs> Um, great cast and uh, one of my favorite comedians and not just acting, but I mean, um, stand up wise, I love Dave Chappelle. He's a brilliant artist. And I think this was his first because um, he played bit roles in movies that I'll talk about later. But this was his first um, starring role. Mm -hmm. His first time to shine. He wrote some of the story and um, along with Jim Brewer and um, Guillermo Diaz and uh, I'm blanking. Um, the Rocket Man. What's his name? <laughs> but I'm yeah, gonna, it's gonna come I'm, to me. It's gonna come to me. All right, go ahead though. <laughs> anyway, a uh, great cast, uh, great moments, and I mean the stoner stuff. It can't. It's not relatable for everybody, but I think the 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 moments they create is funny enough. You know them being real high, flying over the city, and then um. Uh, Jim Brewer's munchy lips, man. I mean, mm -hmm. some pizza man and some, some, you know, and he just lists all the snacks and he goes on and on and on. And you're like, how much, you know, how much more stuff you need? But anybody that had the munchies is like, yeah, man, that sounds good. And then um, Harlan Williams, it hit me, it hit me. Harlan Williams, uh, shouts out, he was the Rocket Man. Um, that movie didn't do so well, but I mean, a great movie in its own right. Um, and yeah, it's just so much fun. Um, I think also the bit where uh, Dave Chappelle's taking out that girl that he likes, and I mean, who never, who did, never knew that, like, doesn't know that feeling of being kind of broke and trying to pinch every penny, and like, you see the meter on the screen of how much money he has, and then she's like, "Hey, you want to take a cab?" He's like, "No, let's walk it off. We got this." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so um. Yeah, great moments, and you know, shouts out to Dave Chappelle and that whole cast. I mean, it's just such a fun movie, man. Abracadabra, baby. Abracadabra, man. Uh, <laughs> I do not have this on my list. I'm very upset about it. Uh, yeah, I just that that movie killed at the time when it first came out. Um, love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, the, I mean, you have a whole. Can you imagine, like, do, you know, working on the script, you know, practicing. Uh, a scene of throwing burgers or something in people's faces and going, fuck you, fuck <laughs> you, fuck you, you're cool. <laughs> I mean, and, and, and who, who didn't want to do that, especially at a job they literally hated? I mean, who, who doesn't want to do that? Like, just give everybody the finger and walk out. Or, or like Jim Brewer going, like, uh, reenacting Jerry Maguire. Like, <laughs> how do you keep a straight face while doing that scene? I have no idea. Like that, that's oh, especially like, in character. His, who's coming with me, man? <laughs> Jan. <laughs> yeah. <you>. Jan. <laughs> so so good. I'm just mad. I I'm re legit mad. I I do not have half baked on my list. That is a classic, 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 classic. Um, shout out. I just remembered an honorable mention of Dave Chappelle, which is Robin Hood Men in Tights, and he was a chew. Uh, just anyway, so so good. All right. I'm going to give you my number 12. It is Kindergarten Cop. Um, yes, an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie makes my list. Uh, so Kindergarten Cop is just such a great film. Uh, it just contains, I think, Arnold's some of his best work kind of as an actor. Uh, the kids are great here, but they almost steal the show. But this has some of the best quotable lines like, boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. Who does your daddy work for? Uh, who's your daddy? And what does he do? Sorry. And it's just just a, a phenomenal movie. Uh, I, work, <laughs> <laughs> I work with children. I work with, you know, in school districts. Um, I'm not a teacher, but I work with kids. And it just it has a special place in my heart. 
Uh, I love kindergarten cop. I, I have law. I have been late to work so many times because I would like see that it's on and I just can't go. I can't leave without finishing it. It is just really, really classic. Um, it's just, you know, it's, I think it's when I think of kindergarten cop, I think of like this would be a great show to have like some sort of TV series on for Netflix or Amazon or whatever. Like this would be a great reboot for like uh, just any kind of action star out there. Um, it kind of was like the framework for the pacifier for Vin Diesel. Um, just, you know, just the, you know, the, the action star relates to kids. Well, 100%. I think it had a lasting effect on Hollywood. I think because of how successful that was, I think they've tried to replicate that formula a million times. I mean, you look at the rock and the tooth fairy, yeah, uh, Jackie Chan and my spy next door. Like, it's just so funny taking an action guy and having to mess around with kids. And even to, uh, this year, Dave Bautista has the my spy movie with that little girl. So it's like, that trope that that it, I think it goes back to kindergarten cop. I don't think they ever did it up until that point. So yeah, it's it's kind of one of those movies that like really crosses a lot of genres for me. Like it's it's a family movie, but it's also a rom com, but it's also like a police like detective story, mystery thriller. Like it's kind of a weird movie, but um, just a classic. I love 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 that movie. Um, what's your number twelve, dude? All right, so this is probably. Uh, my first curveball the bunch probably gonna have a lot of people going like what the heck movie is that but um i went with 1997's fierce creatures okay i don't even know what that is <laughs> <laughs> there it is um so again this is just one of those weird movies that i saw with my dad um, sh um i miss blockbuster uh, my dad used to bring me to blockbuster all the time and it was one of those random things where he grabbed it, I watched it with him, and it stuck with me. Laugh out loud moments, and it's the last hurrah for Monty Python in a sense because it stars John Cleese, it stars Michael Palin, and it's actually based off of a sketch that Terry Jones wrote. And for anybody that doesn't know who Terry Jones is, he was the mother of Brian in Monty Python's Life of Brian. So, and also it's a spiritual sequel to A Fish Called Wanda, which another movie some people are probably like, what's that? Oh, it's um, it came, out, came out in 88. Um, Kevin Klein actually won an Oscar for it. It's a comedy classic and it's has nothing to do with that movie, but it, it reunited the, the main four characters, which was John Cleese, Jamie Lee Curtis, Kevin Klein, and Michael Palin. And Kevin Klein again is a riot in this film. He plays he plays two characters in the film, so he has a moment to kind of showcase his different, his different uh personalities and he's off the wall uh john cleese is off the wall and it's got great at easter eggs like um anyone that's a fan of monty python there's a scene where the john cleese character in this film is tending to a woman who's hurt and then he gets all he, he gets all mad and he's like it's just a flesh wound and it's like you know moments like that it's like ha -ha! <laughs> and i think what's trendy right now is that uh dicaprio uh picture it's like that's a perfect picture for a moment like that cool um and uh, like I said, it literally made me laugh out loud at certain some points of the film. It's really manic. It's really fast paced. It has almost like a British style of humor because John Cleese did help write the story. And um, it's memorable for me. Um, I know it, it might not be so for other people, but I recommend checking it out, especially if you're a fan of the Monty Python series. Um, it's, it's super fun if you're a fan of that. Cool. I'm going to have to remember that one. Very cool. All right. Let's move on to number 11. Uh, should I lead us off here? Oh, go ahead. All right. My first one of Adam Sandler. You know, this is peak Adam Sandler. I'm going with Billy Madison for my number 11. Um, wow. I think, yeah, this is number 11. Uh, this is one of uh, Adam Sandler's first movies, and it's also one of his best. Um, this is like Billy Madison is just from top to bottom, immature. It's gross. It's stupid, but who cares? Like, it's this is one of those movies where. It's, I don't think it's as funny as it was when I first watched it, <laughs> but it does have some really heartwarming moments. You know, if, if you're looking for a movie with like deep meaning or Oscar winning performances, like this ain't it. Um, but if you're looking for an Adam Sandler movie at its finest, you know, this really defines Adam Sandler in the 90s, I think. Um, it's just stupid humor, but it's so entertaining. Um, and it's obviously... <laughs> One of the most quotable movies of the 90s, period. Um, so Billy Madison, there's just too many moments um, to, to go back to. But my favorite one personally was 
rest in peace, Chris Farley, the bus driver, uh, <laughs> screaming at the kids on the bus just always makes me laugh. So Who would steal 30 bags of lunches? <laughs> and he's like giggling, <laughs> eating all the kids' lunches. Good, grand, no yelling on the bus. <laughs> so good, man. It's just, I, oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's iconic. Funny. I think especially for the 90s. Um, it actually hurt me not to have that on my list. I mean, um, Adam Sandler is one of my favorite comedians slash actors ever. Um, you know, O'Doyle rules, all that. Um, it's so and, stupid. <laughs> but it just works. I have no idea why. But it, that's just part of Adam Sandler's genius. It just... This is him like doing his SNL thing and it just works. Yeah, well, I think that character was like just just meant for him. Like to see a kid, a guy, like a, a grown man go through elementary school. <laughs> yeah. There it is. <laughs> the, the, the other favorite moment was when he's giving an example when at the very end and he has to give an a, a example of uh, business business ethics. And he gives a story of a dog that came from when he went through kindergarten and the teacher's there and she's all happy. And then the, the guy's response is like, congratulations, we are all now dumber because of it. <laughs> like, not only did you not address any of the problems of business ethics, but we're all dumber for it. <laughs> and he's like, God rest your soul. <laughs> it was so funny. Oh, I just, Billy Madison, um, it's not my favorite. <laughs> It's poop again. <laughs> We're gonna have more Adam Sandler movies on this list, but that's that's my so first. So ridiculous. So ridiculous. What's your number eleven, man? All right. Um, hopefully, this will be my last one, where people are like, "What is he talking about?" <laughs> um, 1997's "Nothing to Lose." I've seen that. That's uh, a good movie. Yeah. Personally, I, I I'm a huge Martin Lawrence fan. Mm -hmm. Tim Robbins does not get enough credit for what he can do with comedy. I, I mean, he shows it a little bit. He plays the president in Austin Powers, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think it was, the, was it the second one? The Spy Who Shagged Me? I think so. But yeah, um, Tim Robbins is great. Um, <laughs> and the chemistry between him and Martin Lawrence, I mean, it's classic. It's it's one of those buddy movies where, you know, they get put into the circumstance and they're put together. Um, initially, Martin Lawrence was trying to rob Tim Robbins. And then, you know, as the story progresses, they end up uh, pulling a heist together. And that, again, that movie, it may not be in any, anybody else's memory, but for me, that movie made me laugh out loud. Um, you know, Martin Lawrence at his best. Oh, and shouts out to uh, John C. McGinley, who most people know from Scrubs, um, Dr. Terry, uh, Terry Cox. And uh, in this film, he plays a badass cigarette smoking, what you looking at? thug and it's hilarious because i mean anybody that loves scrubs is probably like what the hell <laughs> and um it's just so much fun man i mean there's a scene where martin lawrence is like hanging off um a balcony tied to a sheet and then the hilarity that ensues mm -hmm. you know martin lawrence is crying begging not to die and then tim robbins is like i think i can catch the sheet if i open the door and grab the sheet and martin lawrence is like don't, don't touch the sheet <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, I think one thing I like about like my list is like just hilarious situations that on screen are just funny things to be in. And I also one more bit on this movie before I, I remember talking like what movie is this? Check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, they go over a, a proper way to do a robbery, which is just brilliant. And um, Tim Robbins was just not as intimidating. Obviously, he's like a hokey you know business type guy. And you know, Martin Lawrence is encouraging him to be more scary, be more aggressive. So his response to that was, as they were trying to rob the guy, was like, "Freeze, mother bitch!" <laughs> <laughs> and as they walk out the store, Martin Lawrence is like, "What the hell is a mother bitch?" <laughs> and um, like I said, just moments like that, just just memorable, memorable moments, man. It's it's a fun movie for anybody that hasn't seen it. It's really good. My my. My first memory of that movie, I think there's a scene where there's a giant spider on Tim Robbins, <laughs> and they like have to pull over the car, and then like there's Martin Lawrence doing like Martin Lawrence at his best, like just filming him, and and, and Tim Robbins is like, 
going crazy and they put like dance music to it it's kind of it's just right. yeah yes and then i don't know how it doesn't make sense but it's funny in the moment he steps on a match and his <laughs> he had he still gas himself in the beginning and earlier in the movie and then his feet catch on fire yeah and then mark lawrence of course just gray just oh he's on fire <laughs> so good <laughs> so fun so good all right are we going to the top 10 now we made it man we, we made it, it. All right, 30 minutes later, we get to the top 10. All right, All right number 10. <laughs> I'm going number 10, American Pie. Um, just one of the best sex comedies of all time. Uh, you know, during this movie, when I first watched this for the first time, I kept thinking, like, this is me. This is me and my friends. This is us in high school. And it's not many movies you can kind of relate to. But this movie is kind of all about the characters and all about the kind of human emotion of you know being that age and i think what really strikes about this movie is just the characters because the personalities here are all different um their situations are all unique and there's some real genuine moments in american pie uh it's really funny i, I i'm not you know it's definitely really funny but there's a real emotion and warmth that comes from american pie that i just really really kind of connected with um there's real depth you know it's there's a lot of other raun raunchy sex comedies that are out there, but this one, I think its staying power has to do with the, the genuine characters and how we relate to the characters. Um, and it just set the bar for sex comedies at the time. Uh, so for that reason, it really kind of makes my list. Because when you think of 90s, there are so many sex comedies out there. Uh, number 10, American Pie. Nice. Nice. Um, shout out to that moment after he wrecks the pie and his dad's like we'll just tell your mother you ate it <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> awesome, man. we're going through uh schitt's creek and that that guy is just eugene levy so, yes so funny oh, i'd love awesome. it all right man going to my number 10 um personally uh all the reasons you love billy madison i think this movie um personally i think it eclipsed this the uh, billy madison and this this is happy gilmore yeah um, you know, that immature, obnoxious, loud mouth Sandler, I think personally is, is, I think it's at his best form in this film. And for me, it was a lot more memorable. I mean, I mean, who doesn't remember that Bob Barker fight, you know, and <laughs> just the price is wrong, bitch. And then Bob Barker grabs him by the neck and just kicks his ass. And like anybody that, I mean, especially for people from the 90s that know who Bob Barker is, you know, hosting The Price is Right, it's freaking hilarious, um, the circumstance of that. And also, shouts out to Carl Weathers, man, as Chubbs. Um, brilliant. Creed. What was that? <laughs> Apollo Creed. Yeah, man, Apollo Creed himself. And uh, it's just, you know, he was Action Jackson, man. He's an action star, and it's, it's so cool to see those guys, you know, have fun. You know, you look back at those other movies and he was kind of more serious, kind of shooting guys. And he's really funny in this, you know, it's all, all in the hips. And he's got that goofy ass wooden hand because of that damn alligator or crocodile, whatever it was. And uh, he got his eye, though. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think um, this was that movie where it was the last one where it's like, I think after this, Sandler really started to, to grow as an actor. Um, not so much dramatic stuff here, but you know he has some sweet moments with his grandma. But also, I think this was fun because um, had a early, early performance from Ben Stiller as the head of the nursery home, and so funny. And it's so it's funny. funny because he's such a dick, but it's so funny. Like um, he's so mean to these old people, you know? Like oh, oh, your fingers hurt. <laughs> gonna hurt in a second <laughs> you can trouble me for a warm glass of shut the hell up <laughs> <laughs> oh man and and you know um one last bit on this uh shooter mcgavin uh christopher mcdonald's like one of my favorite character actors people have seen him in all kinds of things more recently you've seen him as the dallas cowboys owner and ballers um he's in a bunch of 90s movies he was the dad and leave it to beaver and um what a villain. Yeah. What a villain, you know, that I eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. <laughs> you eat pieces of shit for breakfast? <laughs> if Grizzly Adams had a beard, Grizzly, Grizzly Adams, Adams did have a beard. 
<laughs> Such a great villain, totally iconic and a memorable. And I, and honestly, had to make my top ten, man. Happy Gilmore. Oh, last one, last one. Um, playing mini golf. I mean, who You're doesn't? My clown. <laughs> That was the moment for me. I was like seven. I played that scene over and over. You're going to die, clown. He just wrecks the freaking course. Because I'm not going to lie. I had anger issues. I, I used to play with my dad. And my dad would beat me and I'd be pissed. <laughs> and then my dad would be like, why do I even take you? You're so mad. Like, <laughs> So, yeah, man. Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore is my number eight. So, uh, you nailed it, man. It's just, this is one of those movies where... You have to watch with friends because you just are all kind of in that experience of laughing out loud. This has one laugh out loud moment after the other. Uh, this was kind of the, the first movies on my list where you are laughing so hard at these scenes that you miss the subsequent scenes because you're just laughing and you have no idea what you just watched. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those films, man, that's just there's a lot of also really great random characters in this, too. You have uh, the jackass guy. You have... Uh, uh, the guy with the nail in his head, um, uh, the homeless guy like that eats the crackers when they they mark their ball. <laughs> it's just, there's just so many great moments in Happy Gilmore. Definitely, it's my number eight. It's so good, man. Uh, let's go. Uh, pressing on. What's that? We pressing forward. Yeah, man. Let's do uh, number. We're at we're at number nine, right? Yeah, I'm at nine. We're at nine. All right. What's your number nine, dude? All right. Um, surprisingly, he didn't have more that like, cracked my list, but I mean, I think his best stuff was done in other periods of time. But I'm going with 1996's The Nutty Professor. Oh, nice. All right. <laughs> um, so many, so many great moments. Personally, I think it's Eddie Murphy's comedic magnum opus, perfectly encapsulated everything he does well he literally plays an entire family he plays the grandma he plays the mom he plays the dad and he plays the creepy uncle though you know the muscular steroid munching brother and it's just incredible he plays a richard simmons knockoff character in like white face which is ridiculous and he plays the two main characters of the story the hero and the villain uh buddy love and sherman clump respectively and Anybody that's a fan of Eddie Murphy, I mean, this is just him at top form. You know, Buddy Love Love is obnoxious and outrageous. And then, you know, you got the chubby Sherman Clump. He does the physical humor great. I love, love, love the little gags in this. Like, he's writing an equation on the board for his students because he teaches at a college. And his stomach is erasing half of the equation. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, man, it's literally, it, it's a crime that he didn't at least get some tort type of a acting acknowledgement for that film, or at least personally, I mean, they give out honorary Oscars all the time. I think that deserves something, you know, some kind of recognition. I mean, I mean, how do you play that many characters and do them well? It's not even like, like those side characters where like, oh, they were just funny. No, they were, I, that you could think that mom and that dad are real people. <laughs> um. And also, he had some great dramatic moments as well, especially, you know, Sherman's, you know, very insecure about his weight and sad, and then the mom cheering him up, and uh, that's literally him talking to himself, which I think is incredible. Um, also, shout out to Dave Chappelle again. Uh, his, <laughs> fourth, <laughs> his fourth on-screen film appearance, and um, man, is it wacky, because he, he literally is, like, spoofing the Def Jam style vibe of that time, because Def Jam comedy, if anybody remembers it, was the shit. Like Def Jam comedy, I mean, that, that made Martin Lawrence a household name, made a lot of other comics like Chris Tucker a household name. So Dave Chappelle flipped that on his head and had this really wacky, over the top, like loony, like ghetto dude that was just like, got dreads on his head and then Eddie Murphy's over here, like take that pile of shit off your head. <laughs> and um, it's just such a, hilarious hilarious funny movie uh great one it's not on my list when i think of nutty professor i go straight to the mama jokes and that's kind <laughs> of what i think for me came out of that movie was that you know i was in probably late middle school at the time something around there and that's what everyone talked about your mama's so fat your mama's so <laughs> stupid like any kind of joke about that was like for a year year plus 
of just everyone just telling your mama jokes. And it's a great movie. That that Dave Chappelle scene, man, classic, classic, classic. When he gets thrown into the piano, just, <laughs> just great, great stuff. Uh, I'm going to go into my number nine. And I'm going to go a little bit back to Adam Sandler. And that is The Wedding Singer. Um, um, unlike a lot of other roles here, man, just Adam Sandler's a real person. You, he's not this like kind of immature goof like you saw in uh, Billy Madison. He's a real person. He's, he's not just some uh, overgrown, uh, wacky character. You know, first and foremost, though, the brilliant 80s kind of spoof satire of this movie really kind of clicks, especially in that first act. This has one of the best first acts of all of my movies. It's really funny. The second act of um, the Wedding Singer kind of dies down, but the third act is amazing, especially when you have the proposal. You have uh, Rapper's Delight being sung by a grandmother. It's amazing. Um, so it's just one of those feel-good movies. And I love, 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 also love when Adam Sandler is just heartbroken and depressed. The Kill Me Now Please song when he's performing for Drew Barrymore is an all-timer. Uh, just no one nails, you know, depressed, uh, sad uh, broken like Adam Sandler. That was just really, really funny. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, my number eight is 1993's Robin Hood Men in Tights. Nah, uh, no, I, I had that on my list. It was on your honorable mention, but for me, um, I'm a big mel brooks fan which is why i even mentioned dracula dead and loving it even though it wasn't the best <laughs> one um it was his last great picture i would say um because he did this one right before dracula after like he stopped directing and writing movies um but it's still it was upper tier i think he hit some great gags and i think eddie murphy and mel brooks what i love about the, them as um using their star power is giving like younger comedians a shot and Again, I've been talking about him all pod, this whole pod, but Dave Chappelle's first film appearance, and it's brilliant. Um, the character of a Chew, mm -hmm. and again, those subtle gags. You know, the fact that his name is a Chew, whenever it's mentioned, it's like, oh, hey, a Chew, and then the, someone next to me is like, bless you. <laughs> Great, and it's so subtle, but stuff like that. I mean, that's Mel Brooks in a nutshell. He specializes in those little details, and also. Um, you know, I love the character of Blinken, which is funny because he's a blind guy, but he's also kind of short of hearing. And one of my favorite, favorite, favorite lines, like of, of all time, really is, um, "Hey, Blinken!" You know, Dave Chappelle's calling him, and he's like, "Did you say, hey, Blinken?" <laughs> nah, man, I said, "Hey, Blinken." <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, also he actually references white man can't jump as Carrie Ellis tries to jump on the horse and he falls off, and Dave Chappelle's like, "White man can't jump." <laughs> And, um, you know, um, one more little nod to that movie, the little John meeting Robin for the first time. And in order to cross this bridge, you need to pay the toll. <laughs> <laughs> and if we don't get no tolls, then we don't get no rolls. And and that that entire sequence is one of my favorite comedic skits, like, of all time. Like, if I could pull it up on YouTube, I'd watch it over and over and over. It's great. Um, Carrie Ells as a, you know... Uh, the only actor with a true British accent to play Robin Hood. Um, Freaking great. And the fact that uh, when they start battling each other with the sticks and the sticks keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. And then at some point he's just flicking them with a little stick. And then little John falls in the water. <laughs> I can't swim. And it's like, it's there's no body of water. It's a puddle. <laughs> so good. I, I can go on and on and on. But, oh, man, such a fun picture. And also uh, little Richard's mole. Um, that miraculously keeps moving. Oh man, I can go on and on about this picture, but um, just just a great, great, great Mel Brooks film. Shouts out to Mel Brooks, man. Big time. I had that on my honorable mention. I think I just forgot to bring it up, but uh, also shout out to Patrick Stewart. A young Patrick Stewart plays King Richard in that at the end. Yeah. You know and he dubs all the toilets Johns. <laughs> <laughs> so great. Man. I love that movie. So good. It's good to be a king. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number seven. Uh, I think that's where we're at. I'm going to go with Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Um, nice. Yep. No, no, this is not my number one Jim Carrey film. Uh, we'll get to that soon. But, you know, this is Jim Carrey at his finest. His first major role back in 1994. Um, but I don't know about you, man, but I was actually a Jim Carrey fan before this film came out. 
Um, I was a huge fan of it in Living Color. So I kind of already like knew what to expect heading into it. That makes sure there's nothing. <laughs> so good so good fire marshal bill man just all timer um yeah but so jim carrey as um ace ventura there's you know there's no intelligent plot in this film there's no famous actors here and i think that's what makes this so memorable is that this is literally jim carrey's first role and he carries the whole film and it's still funny and i think that's this is this like the this is the movie that made jim carrey a star it was Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. It was just an all-timer. There's way too many quotable lines from this movie, from the first one to When Nature Calls. It's a classic. What's that? I totally agree, man. Um, <laughs> I'm a huge, huge, huge Jim Carrey fan. Uh, when I was little, he was my hero. But I actually left those off my list, Ace Ventura series, just for the plain fact that as I got older, I never, I just kind of not, I never found myself really coming back to them as much. And personally, I liked When Nature Calls more than the first one. But I mean, right. hey, to each their own, you know, yeah. you like, you know, everyone likes what they like. And uh, for me, I, I preferred the second one. So I can't argue. They're both so, so classic. So uh, what's your number seven, man? Shish kebab. Shish kebab. <laughs> Bumblebee tuna. Bumblebee tuna. Yes. All right, man. So uh, going into my number seven. We got 1995's Friday. Oh, um, nice. Oh man, I, I can't I can't tell you how many times I've watched this movie. And to be honest, the same reason why, um, yeah, you know, our last show you were talking about uh, at Aladdin for me, it's just Chris Tucker, Chris Tucker, Chris Tucker, Chris Tucker. This was his showcase. This made him a star. If you didn't see him on Dev Jam, you saw him on this, and you were like, "Who is that guy? That guy's funny." And I think. Just like uh, Ace Ventura for Jim Carrey, Chris Tucker became a household name because of Friday. And his character is smoky, is just ridiculous. Um, one of my favorite lines was just, um, you know, Ice Cube's working out and then, you know, the, the awesome shot of just like him looking at him from the other side. And he's like, you must be one stupid motherfucker to get fired on your day off. <laughs> <laughs> and then segueing off of that, you know, like, you know, Ice Cube's like, man, they got me on camera stealing boxes. And then Chris Tucker's like, what you, what you need boxes for? You trying to build a clubhouse? <laughs> and it's like, you know, again, going back to like quotes and rewatchability. I mean, I mean, if Friday's on TV, I'm going to sit Ooh. down. You know, I could be, I mean, like, like you said, I could be running late to work. I, could, I got somewhere to be. But if Friday's on, oh, shit, I got to watch this one part real quick. Like, it's just, it's just one of those movies for me. And also the relatable situations, you know, I mean, not everybody knows what it's like growing up in the hood or, you know, but, you know, I, I think everyone can relate to having a bully like Debo, maybe not that scripted of the big guy trying to steal your bicycle. But I mean, who, who's never had that moment, especially when they're kids, like, oh, crap, that guy's coming, you know, and then they all tuck their chains. Um, I mean, another another classic moment for me is uh, Reg getting his, his chain stolen. My grandma would give me that chain. <laughs> and then, <laughs> Chris Tucker's like, oh, he's going to cry in the car, and he's over here running like this. Um, just so many great moments for me. Oh, and, and also relatable situations. I mean, who who, does, who doesn't know that feeling of like, oh, my God, I need to poop? And Chris Tucker's locked out of his house, and he ends up pooping on the side of his house. I mean, I've never done that, but I know that feeling like, oh, crap, I got to go, I got to go. And it's just um, so many great moments for me, man. Um, it's one of my favorite comedies like ever, not even just the nineties. I just, I love Friday. So I, I had to have it on there. Yeah. That's a movie I need to see again. I haven't seen that in a long, long time. I mean, I remember laughing my ass off when I watched, I gotta watch that again. There's some movies here, yeah. man. They're going to have so maybe funny. like break down some movies here. That's, that's a classic. All time. You know, Chris Tucker's the man. Uh, my number six is Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, Mrs. Doubtfire is just an extremely uh, funny and heartwelt, heartfelt film. It has a ton of laughs, a ton of tears. You know, this is, you know, you know, the man, Robin Williams, at his finest. And this is, for me, his role in this movie is right up there with Aladdin. Um, it's just absolutely... Same here. Really? Yeah. Awesome. So, you know, it, I think what makes this movie so memorable is just its message that, like, no family is, you know, perfect. You know, there's a lot of flaws in families. And um, it's the fact that, you know, families, even though they won't be together, they're, you know, they're, there's always love that's never going to go away. 
Um, and it's just got a ton of heart layered throughout the film. And it just has withstood the test of time, even more so today when you look around uh, what's going on today. But uh, just a lot of warmth, a lot of touching moments. And just Jim, or sorry, Robin Williams just going crazy, going ham, doing what he does. And I just miss that guy so much, man. Do you remember his impression of a hot dog? <laughs> <laughs> so I love him, man. He's so the man. Good. Yeah, I miss, I miss that. Of all the actors, man, I, he'd probably be my number one. Right up there with Chris Farley. This sucks. That's what kind of hurts going through this, man. Especially you know, the 90s was owned by SNL. Phil Hartman, Chris Farley, all these guys, man. It just, just sucks. Just These guys were just so in the prime of their careers. Yes, yes. And, I, I you know, I, going back really, really quick, but, I mean, one of the reasons why I had Fierce Creatures and Robin Hood Men in Tights, it's like it definitely felt like an end of an era. You know, Monty Python and Mel Brooks, respectively, 70s and 80s, they were like kings, you know? And then these were like their last films in the 90s. And then you get all these new guys like Carrie and Sandler coming up, yep. rising. And it's just interesting to see like the end of like a comedic time, you know, as the new generation comes on. Yep. And um, yeah, man, RIP Robin Williams, man. Chris Farley, those, those oh, I, I just, I'll cherish those moments forever, man. So absolutely. We're going to get into some Chris Farley soon. What's your number six, dude? Oh, yeah. And that's actually, I'm glad you brought it up. My number <laughs> six. <laughs> 1995's Tommy Boy. Mm, all right, let's do it. <laughs> again, again, again. I honestly, I, I, I kind of wish I have it higher. I wish I, I would switch it with my number five. I'm looking at it right now. Um, great, great, great chem chemistry and duo with David Spade and Chris Farley. And you know, we touched on our last show about Timon and Pumbaa and Mike and Sully. I think, you know, you go back to like Abbott and Costello. I think what makes duo so great is just having that polar opposite slash balance of character. I mean, you know, Chris Farley is a spark plug. I mean, did he paint chubs for, for as a kid or something? Like, did did he live under power lines? And he's just so so <laughs> so excitable and so crazy, and he's so loud. He's so funny. He's got the physical humor. And then David Spade is that sarcastic deadpan straight guy but he himself is hilarious but he, they, they play off each other so well um richard <laughs> that guy in the little coat <laughs> were you watching spanker vision oh man i could quote that movie yeah. over and over um <laughs> oh mommy the rhino's getting too close to the car <laughs> and he's too scared to get out he's just a little man <laughs> Oh, man, I love that movie. And also, I mean, I love buddy comedies. That's one of the reasons why, going through my list, I got a lot of them. Uh, the Road Trip style comedy is great. It makes for great fanfare. Um, I mean, just, um, what else can I say? I mean, Dan Aykroyd is great as the villain. Um, Rob Lowe. <laughs> oh, dude, Rob Lowe, man. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> him dozing him off with the gasoline. I'm a maniac. Oh, man, so many great moments. And, um, yeah, man, I mean, Tommy Boy, it's one of those movies I can watch over and over and over. Um, that movie never gets old for me. And I also love that, you know, being a big guy, being kind of goofy, I love that they gave him a romantic uh, lead as well. You know, give, give the big guy some love too, you know, that was pretty cool. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> admittedly, that's actually one of my favorite scenes when the kid's across on the beach and he's in the boat and they're, like, talking crap to him. Hey, lady, there's a big while on your boat it's, like, it's yeah. so mean but it's so funny <laughs> so good. yeah my number five is tommy boy uh, nice just all time you know the chris farley at his finest man um you you nailed it you know the dialogue the chemistry between farley and spade is all time all time uh but my favorite scene is the two of them when they're in the car driving and they're singing along to superstar by the carpenters and the hood comes up <laughs> And like they don't know where they're driving. Like that's one of the most laugh out loud scenes that I, in my life that I, I just lost it. And then like um, you know like eventually down the road they realize that Chris Farley kept the can in the hood of the car. Or, or just, there's just so much funny parts in this movie. Um, you know like from when David Spade hits him with a wood plank, and then they're in the diner, and he's like, "It doesn't hurt here." Not so much here, but right here, like, and it's just this giant bruise on his neck, and and, and David Spade's like, no, 
nothing. And then the waitress comes by and is like, Jesus, what happened to your neck? <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> uh, There's just classic, classic moments. That's my number five, man. Uh, I don't think you gave your number five yet, right? I haven't. All right, what's your number five, dude? All right, so you already touched on on on, uh, on my number five, um, the wedding singer. Nice, big big Adam Sandler f- film. I think to me that's my favorite Adam Sandler film. Period. Nice. I'm a I'm a sucker for '80s um, nostalgia. That entire soundtrack. I'm not gonna lie. Me and my sister, uh, we used to play that all the time. We had the CD. Um, kids over here are like, what's a CD? <laughs> but yeah. Uh, it's it's the best showcase of his talents. He already kind of touched on that. Um, not only was he funny, but you saw him play that dramatic, depressed downside. And I thought up until Uncut Gems, um, check out that piece on MoviesMatrix.com, by the oh. way. <laughs> I did a review for Uncut Gems, and I talked about how The Wedding Singer was, up until that point, the best showcase of his talent. Um, you hit the nail on the head. I think somebody's got, somebody kill me, please, is... Not only a funny song, it's a good song. Yeah. And he mentioned that uh, I was listening to The Cure when I wrote this, and it's just like I get that. Like I, I my dad grew me up on The Cure. <laughs> and shout, out, uh, shout out to John Lovitz for that scene when he's in the curtain. Like that, that's <laughs> an odd performance, but it's so funny. <laughs> yeah, and also um, one thing I want to note of, of that movie because we you've already touched about what I love about it. It was the best use of his crew, in my opinion, because anyone that's seen Adam Sandler movies, he has a lot of the same reoccurring characters. For example, Steve Buscemi, who uh, was in Billy Madison as that creepy kid, uh, high school loser who wants to kill his old high school friends. And then Steve Buscemi also played in Big Daddy as the homeless guy. But I thought his best cameo was in The Wedding Singer, you know? And I loved how at the end, he actually was the wedding singer for his wedding. Um, that was awesome. And also Alan Covert of uh, Grandma's Boy. Um, he played the best friend. You know, he had the he was the limo driver. He was kind of a Michael Jackson wannabe. Had the glove, had the jacket. And a f- fun fact, he was the homeless guy in Happy Gilmore with a beard. You just don't recognize him. Um, he was his caddy in Happy Gilmore. And um, yeah, man. Um, best Adam Sandler film for me. And uh, pretty much best showcase for him of, of, of him as an actor. Yeah, especially their chemistry between Sandler and Drew Barrymore. I mean, that's just, you would think that they're actually dating. It's so well done. I love The Wedding Singer, man. That's a classic. Let's go on to number four. <laughs> this is Julia Gulia. <laughs> <laughs> How good is that ending, though? Like, the, the song is so well done. Nobody um, talks to Billy Idol that way. No, I don't right. Like, there's so many, like... <laughs> And then he interrupts the kiss. Hey, hey, Robbie, that's a great song. I'm going to tell those record company guys about you. He's like, can I kiss the girl first? (laughs) Love it. So good. Like, um, I think Billy Idol's like bouncers, like knock him in, knock the (laughs) douchebag boyfriend into the bathroom. Like it's so feel good. And it's just, it's just one of those movies that you're just, yes, it's great, 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 great movie. Let's go on to number four, man. Uh, I'm going to lead us off. I've got the big Lebowski. I'm my number four. Uh, probably the best and unique characters of any movie on my list by far. When you think of Big Lebowski, you think of powerhouse performances, Jeff Bridges, John Goodman, Julian Moore, Steve Buscemi. Uh, it goes on and on. John Tutoro. Like the first time I saw this movie, man, I'll admit, I didn't really enjoy it. But the more you watch it, the more after repeated viewings, the more you realize like this movie is like comedic gold, man. Um, I, I just... The, you know, the characters written by the Coen brothers really take center stage. And, it, you know, the dude, uh, I think I drank white Russians like all the time after I saw this. Like it was like my choice of drink for a long, long time. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of like Wayne's World where it's just so quotable. Uh, it'll make you laugh. It'll make you cry. Um, it's just so sharp and witty. The script here really takes center stage with all these powerhouse characters. The Big Lebowski is my number four, man. All right, real quick, I got to duck before the film night film nerds get their pitchforks, but I haven't seen that one. <laughs> you got so it. I gotta duck. Um, <laughs> that's definitely on my two watch list. I mean, it's on any classic list that I've looked up, kind of in reference to like the movies I wanted to pick, and um, definitely one I got to see, man. I'm a big fan of the Coen Brothers, so it's classic, man. It's classic. What's your number four, man? All right, 1994 is Dumb and Dumber. Number four. Um, All right. 
<laughs> yeah, another classic road film, oh, buddy comedy. Again, that's just something I relate to. I mean, you know, being somewhere with your best friend and getting into dumb shit is just the memories of your lifetime. And then seeing silly, crazy moments happen on screen, I think, is something I enjoy. Um, what outstanding chemistry with Jeff Daniels and Jim Carrey, which is, I think Jeff Daniels doesn't get enough credit because, you know, most people remember him from his more dramatic roles, you know, up until that point. He wasn't seen as a funny guy, but I think they, him and Jim Carrey committed to this. Like, they probably looked at the script, okay, okay, dumb, dumber, okay, we're, we're going to be dumb, and they just dive into it, man. And um, admittedly, like, you know, some of the Farrelly Brothers' humor is... It doesn't age well, but personally, when I was a kid, I mean, I didn't understand a lot of the jokes, but I mean, some of my favorite scenes aren't even naughty at all, you know? I mean, Jim Carrey walking by that news article and, no way! And he walks out into the lobby, we've landed on the moon! <laughs> freaking great, freaking great. And also, one of my favorite scenes that's a lot more subtle is um, Harlan Williams from Half Baked plays a cop trying to pull them over. He's like, pull over! And he's like, no, it's a cardigan, but thanks for asking. <laughs> Here he comes out, killer boots, man. So many, I, love it. I love it. And even their freaking names, Lloyd Christmas and Harry Dunn, man. Iconic names. Like, put that on the list of, like, Griswolds and, yeah. you know, uh, it, it just memorable, memorable, memorable characters. Endlessly quotable. I mean, I've watched Dumb and Dumber so many times. My VHS, the box was tearing, man. Like. <laughs> um, just, just an outstanding, outstanding, and also I think um, in terms of wacky Carrie, like over the top Jim Carrey, right up there with my number two film that I'll talk about later. Yeah, I'm not going to touch too much on that one because I think we're going to get to that soon. Um, ah, man, but yeah, the scene where Jim Carrey has double gloves on and you see <laughs> Harry like, I can't feel my hands. My hands are numb. He's like, and Jim's like, take my extra pair of gloves. My hands are getting, you know, sweaty. And so there's so many memorable lines, but I think we're gonna get touch that a little bit later. Uh, oh, casual but, too. <laughs> like, yeah, I got some extra gloves. <laughs> so All right, man. All right. So no. you already, uh, you already touched. Wait, are we on your number four? We're, no, I did my number four, which was the Big Lebowski. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, you're number three, right? My number three is groundhog day um so i really love this film this is bill murray um just crushing 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 it um you know bill murray has this like awesome hard edge that he kind of has in a lot of his movies but in this movie you know he kind of discovers you know there's this movie has a lot of character development about um groundhog day you know there's it's not exactly kind of laugh out loud funny but it's watching Bill Murray in these kind of like really weird situations and just laughing. And like other than like maybe Jim Carrey or probably like Steve Martin, I don't know if this movie would have been as good without Bill Murray. Bill Murray is this is one of his best movies. Um, and it just has like a really kind of serious message. It's like it's a comedy, but, you know, it's it's dramatic. You see uh, Bill Murray go through this transformation. It's one of the most uh repeat what what is that word i'm looking for you can watch it over and over and over again um it depends yeah, on syndication on cable tv so yeah i'm sure somebody's seen it at least once it's just one of the richest and deepest comedies on my list it's groundhog day i just i love this movie you just watch it it's like kindergarten cop for me if it's on tv you know i'm gonna watch it you know i i agree 100 but personally um i can watch that movie over and over and over i love bill murray he's one of my favorite actors um Again, you kind of hit on it already. Like for me, it didn't, it didn't make me laugh out loud. Um, I couldn't include it on my all-time comedy list. But as a film, that movie is just, you know, it, it was just too dramatic, too heavy for me. It had a lot of Twilight Zone vibes, especially in the very beginning. Um, but yeah, that's why I left it off my list. It's just, it just wasn't up there in terms of the comedy. Mm -hmm. But as a film, it's phenomenal. And, um, you know, endlessly quotable for me, I mean, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Phil? <laughs> Phil Connors? Ned from high school. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man. Um, it just it just didn't make me laugh as much, but I mean, brilliant film. So awesome. Which number three, man? All right, my number three, you touched on already. Um, Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes. 
I'm, I'm a big, big, big Robin Williams fan as well. And um, you hit on a lot of stuff that's great in it. I feel like, you know, because he, he has dramatic roles that he's fantastic in. But I think in terms of, like, his comedies, I think that's his shining moment. Peak Robin Williams doing a little bit of both. Showing the drama of, like, him trying to get, get, the, get the custody of his kids. But also just taking that nanny thing, you know, full, full gear. Um, fun fact, man, uh, my Twitter display name used to be, it was a run by fruiting. Uh, that's actually one of my favorite scenes. <laughs> and she, she pegs Pierce Brosnan with the lime and then he turns around all pissed. She's like, oh, it was a run by fruiting. The gentleman ran that way. <laughs> Freaking great, man! And uh, my one of my fondest memories was of being a, uh, I was a little kid. Um, the whole scene of him and his uh, landlord inspecting, and he had to play himself, but he also had to play his sister from England. And brilliant, the hello with the cream. Oh, you get cream in your coffee now. And um, he was trying to, you know, he, he, when his mask initially dropped, and then the the bus runs it over. His oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I lost it. I was a kid. I was crying. I was laughing out loud. And that whole mania of that scene is just classic comedy, classic 90s comedy, and classic Robin Williams, man. Had to be in my top three. I love Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, it's it's one of the all-timers, man. Mrs. Doubtfire. I love that movie. Uh, my number two, I'm going with Wayne's World, man. Ah, freaking Wayne's World, one of my all-time favorite movies. Just some of the best clever humor of all time. Um, but what makes Wayne's World so freaking great is that it just highlights and subverts the rules of film in this movie. Because you see kind of Mike Myers do kind of a lot of the same stuff that you saw in Austin Powers. You know, and this is... Wayne's World was kind of the foundation of what made Austin Powers so successful. You know, you see Wayne and Garth talking directly into the camera. Um, you see blatant product placement, which is so, so funny. Um, there are pop culture parodies. There are guest appearances. There are the famous Bohemian Rhapsody headbang. Um, just, just, you know, just there's funny alternate endings. You know, everything about this movie was so fresh and so unique at the time. Um, you know, there's a lot of silly quotable lines in this movie that are just so, so legendary. Um, but it's just one of those movies that is just so smart for its time. Um, and it's my number two. And I, it's crazy that it's not my number one because it's one of my all time favorite movies. I agree 100 percent, man. Yep. What's your number two, man? <laughs> All right, my number two, uh, 1997's Liar Liar. <laughs> I, I, I can't believe it's not on my list. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I thought it was kind of funny. You posted it earlier, and I was just like, ah, oh, that's my number two. I didn't want to like touch on right. that too much. But, um, in my opinion, in terms of his comedies, <laughs> I'm even more so than Dumb and Dumber and Ace Ventura, his best comedic effort. Yeah. And it was also a complete performance because – it, it showed his dramatic chops as well. And I think, you know, going in my top five, when you look at Wedding Singer and Mrs. Doubtfire, and I'm also, you know, now talking about Liar Liar, it was the best overall complete performance from all those respect, respected actors. Um, <laughs> where do I start? Um, <laughs> it, it's Jim Carrey in a nutshell. Um, him fighting himself because he can't lie in, in, uh, according to the film and him fighting himself to tell a lie of the pen is blue and he couldn't say it and he's fight his, his, his hand and he's like, I'll write it, I'll rip you off. And then he's like, the pen's writing on his face and then his secretary comes in like, what's going on? He's like, the goddamn pen is blue. <laughs> and all he wanted to do was say it was red and it just proved the, the, the point that he couldn't lie and, and it's just, the physical, the physical comedy of Jim Carrey is just peak, peak, peak in Liar Liar for me. His overall best comedic performance. Um, him roasting his boss, uh, talking crap to the entire litany of people is just crazy. Um, him beating himself up in the bathroom to try to get out of his case because he couldn't lie. And then the guy's like, what, what are you doing? I'm <laughs> kicking my ass, you mind? <laughs> Freaking brilliant. And also the blooper reel in itself at the end, it, and it just shows how freaking good he was at what he did and how many how many cuts and takes ended up on the floor because he could just go on and on and i love how he did yeah. the, the paper. 
<laughs> yes, yes. And um, man, Jim Carrey is like, like I said, when I grew up, he was one of my heroes. And I think Liar Liar was the best picture to capture everything he does well. Dram dr uh, drama, comedy, over the top, zaniness. It it's just perfect Jim Carrey there. Couldn't agree more, man. You absolutely nailed it. And I'm so glad you brought up the blooper reel. Uh, some of the best blooper reels have come from Jim Carrey. Because, I mean, I'm, like you said, imagine how much actual uh, film was wasted because Jim Carrey is just so funny. Uh, just so many lines probably, you know, wasted from people laughing or just improv, all that. Just, you know, definitely up there with Robin Williams in terms of just pure comedic genius, man. Just... Just, just own the 90s, man. Jim Carrey. All right, ready to number ones? Yes, sir. All right, lead us off, man. Why don't you lead us off? All right, well, it's so, so funny that we're right there on the same page, man. Um, what movie can capture the 90s better than Wayne's World? Yeah! Wayne's <laughs> World, party time! Oh, man, like... <laughs> it, <laughs> the rip jeans the hair the 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 uh you know between mike myers and rob lowe ed o'neill like all the the cameos in this the all the endless endless quotes um uh, you know the whole car like who, who you know doesn't game remember on. <laughs> <laughs> game on yeah who doesn't remember playing with their kids in the street and um a gun wreck i don't even have enough guns to necessitate an entire wreck what am i gonna do with a gun wreck. Oh man, I can go on forever and ever. Um, we were doing that earlier on Twitter, and um, it, it, I, it's it's just to me, it's it's the perfect '90s movie, and it's just so funny. And those jokes don't even they don't they don't get old for me. And I think yes. that's what what ultimately separated that film. Like to me, it was Wayne's World, and then everything else. Yeah. Because there was nothing about Wayne. World to me that didn't age well like I mean the gags are just as funny as it is now as it was back then there was nothing that like you know the whole uh Garth and Reebok gear like <laughs> like people would do things because they get paid <laughs> and that's just really sad <laughs> the choice of a new generation <laughs> exactly. and also uh Rob Lowe shout out to him holy crap and then the, the, the face he gives them he's just like like, come oh. come on guys <laughs> oh and the uh the terminator gag i mean have you seen this boy Whoa! <laughs> um so many great moments and um you know all-time comedies that's that's up there for me that's in my top 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 list for sure uh i love wayne's world man yeah i mean it's like i said it's it's all-time movie uh, i was watching some clips of it earlier and there's one scene where uh Garth is sitting on the car with Wade and Garth is like, do you find Bugs Bunny attractive when he puts on <laughs> women's clothes and dresses up as a girl bunny? And, and I just, I lost my shit for like a good <laughs> five minutes. And it's just so classic. There are so many lines in that movie, man. Like, um, you know, that you know started? go ahead. Well, uh, that seems seem pretty natural because you see like Mike Myers almost looks like he broke character. He was like, no, and he like belts that huge iconic laugh that he has that you've heard in Austin Powers a million times. And it's just um, such a great moment, man. Just th them shooting the shit on top of their car, you know? <laughs> like, what am I? You it's, it started the that's what she said movement. And that still happens today. And that's like, that's so wild to think that it comes from Wayne's world. That's what she said. Uh, they're just... Yeah, between Wayne and Garth and just the crew. Just <laughs> I crew love up. you, man. <laughs> I know. I love you too. No, you Fair. don't, man. <laughs> <laughs> like Garth, like with the vacuum on his head, like it's sucking my will to live. And like, Wayne's going, like it certainly does suck. <laughs> There's so many like <laughs> epic lines in that. Oh movie. man, it can go on and on, man. Oh, yeah. And and the, the green screen I, I wish i could green screen my performance right now i mean i don't have delaware right behind me but it's just so much fun delaware i mean delaware <laughs> <laughs> all right the boss. so good man love that movie but it's not my number one you've already touched on it my number one is mock yeah you see down below dumb and dumber dumb and dumber is one of the greatest comedies of all time not the 90s it's just pretty insane that like Almost every scene is crushed. It every almost every joke. I I swear it's probably like ninety nine point five percent of the jokes in this movie absolutely hit. 
Uh, you touched on it. You know, Carrie and Daniels, their chemistry is just pitch perfect. Um, there's so many classic lines here. Um, and it's just, it's so well paced. It's spontaneous. Um, it, it's just an all timer. I don't, you really nailed everything to say about Dumb and Dumber. Uh, but it's just one of the most quoted movies of my life. And I'll never forget it. It's, it's Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels. And what's really interesting about Dumb and Dumber is I went back a little bit and I, I went to an interview between Jim Carrey um, talking with David Letterman. And he's literally talking about Dumb and Dumber and David Letterman sitting there like, you know, pretty much acting. You check it out on YouTube. You can find it easily. Um, but, but pretty much acting like this is a kind of a, a nothing movie, you know, like there. And Jim Carrey is kind of like, yeah, it's just like wacky. Uh, you're making all these kind of jokes. About Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, like like no one knew at the time how great this movie was going to be. And in fact, yeah. they even told Jeff, Jeff Daniels that it was going to ruin his career at the time. So the, yeah, I, I read that. Yeah, so there's just it, the movie was just so out of nowhere. It was kind of like Airplane, I think. Like Airplane was kind of like out of nowhere. It just was brilliant. Anyway, so my number one's Airplane. You know, to, to this day, I, I see it, that I like it a lot. You know, and there's so many throwaways. Our pets' heads are falling off. Like, it's just <laughs> endless, endless, endless quotes, man. Nonstop, man. Uh, any last thoughts, man? We think we've been talking for almost like two hours here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it was just as fun and just as crazy as I thought it was going to be. Like, there's no way our, our lists would be perfect. But I think it was fun that our number ones and number twos were pretty, pretty close. Yeah. We had the same thoughts. And, uh, Man, I love the 90s, man. It was a great time period, man. The best, the best. My face literally hurts from laughing and smiling <laughs> for the last like nearly two hours. All right, so make sure you follow uh, Loretto on Twitter at Marcellus Durden. Check out his content at Movies Matrix. Follow them on Twitter at Movies Matrix. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you want. I am Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. For Loretto, for myself, thanks for watching, guys. Stay awesome. I am Iron Man. I find your lack of faith disturbing. I want you to remember the one man who beat you. The Force will be with you. Always. A king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. I love you so day. What's but a smile on that face? That's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry. Just wanna watch the